What's up guys, this is a short video on T3 and T4 production that happens in the thyroid gland, so let's jump right into this. The thyroid gland, to begin, is made up of follicular cells that are arranged in almost a big circle. Each one of these is a follicular cell. And it forms this area in the in the middle in the center of all of these and that's called the colloid the colloid space the colloid space is a very viscous type liquid space and a lot of uh, the steps of T3 and T4 production happen in the colloid space and some of the steps um, happen in the follicular space so let's jump right into this step one you need iodine. Iodine is needed in the production of T3 and T4. It's its only known function in the whole body is for T3 and T4 production in the thyroid gland. And the way that iodine gets into the cell is through this ATPase called NIS transporter. It stands for sodium iodide symporter. It brings in one iodine. and it brings in two sodium and this is ATP dependent now that we have the iodine in the iodine's next step is to cross over the other side of the follicular cell and enter into the colloid space and it does this through a transporter called the pendrin transporter pendrin while that's happening the rough endoplasmic reticulum of the follicular cell, and that's the site where protein production happens in cells, is producing something called thyroglobulin. It's a protein called thyroglobulin. And that thyroglobulin is also sent out into the colloid space. So this thyroglobulin is basically a long protein with a lot of tyrosine segments on it. It's not important to know the structure of tyrosine, just know that these are a lot of tyrosine segments. And what happens is, when the iodine exits out through the pendrin transporter, the iodine is then converted from iodine with a negative charge to iodide atomic and this happens via oxidation and the enzyme responsible for this oxidation to go from I with a neg iodine with a negative one charge to iodine with a zero charge is thyroid peroxidase that should be pretty easy oxidase it even tells you in the enzyme itself when this iodine is oxidated down to the atomic iodide state it will come over to these tyrosine radicals I'm sorry tyrosine segments and it will bind and it will bind either once like in the case of this one forming something called MIT or it could bind twice forming something called DIT MIT stands for monoiodotyrosine that makes sense. Mono stands for, mono is for one, one iodine on the tyrosine, monoiodotyrosine, or two iodines, diiodotyrosine, di for two, I for iodine, T for tyrosine, diiodotyrosine. Now, this process of the atomic iod, um, iodide coming to bind, either making MIT or DIT, is called organification. The next process is called, after organification, is called coupling. So we've had step one, NIS, transporter bringing in sodium and iodine. The iodine leaves through the pendrin transporter. It's now in the colloid. It gets oxidized to atomic iodide. The iodide binds either once or twice to, a tires, to the various tyrosine segments making MIT or DIT. Then they couple together 
and the coupling happens as either MIT plus DIT or DIT plus DIT. And this MIT plus DIT forms T3, and this DIT plus DIT forms T4. Now, they're still connected onto this thyroglobulin. They have not, this T3 and T4 have not been detached. What's going to happen is the whole unit, the thyroglobulin with the T3s and T4s, will now enter back into the cell. And then proteolysis will happen. Proteolysis just stands for protein cutting. It will cut off the T3s and T4s. And those T3s and T4s are free to exit the cell to go have their function all across the body. And when it gets out here, some of the T4 can get converted to T3. The reason is because T3 is the more active form. T4 has very low activity. Really, it's T3 with the most active uh, is the most active in terms of its actions. And this is called deiodination. Not only does this give T3 the active form, but that extra iodine can then be used again in the process all over again. And the thyroglobulin can be used again from this proteolysis that we talked about happening as the last step before the T3 and T4 can exit out. That's the basic breakdown on T3 and T4 production. I'll see you in another video. Bye.